If your computer is running slow, you need more RAM. That is pretty common advice that's out there, but is it true? Uh, not really. The reality is that adding more RAM is not the silver bullet that magically fixes everything. So before you rush out and spend a lot of money on something that may or may not fix your slow computer, let's talk about what you actually need to know. Your computer has some sort of storage which is where you save all your info and the data is there permanently or until you delete it. Memory or RAM which is random access memory is the opposite of that. It is where data is stored temporarily and it is volatile which basically means when you shut down your computer or when you restart it whatever was stored in the RAM is automatically erased. Okay, so if you have more RAM, does that mean your PC will be faster? Well, yes, but, but also no. RAM is about being able to have more data loaded into memory so it can be accessed faster. So the more RAM that you have, the more stuff that can be loaded into memory, which translates into feeling like your computer is that faster. But, and there's always a but. So here's the first system. It's got eight gigs of RAM and we're about to open a whole bunch of applications. So let's open up Chrome and let's open up a blog post and let's open up a new tab and go to my YouTube channel. Let's select a video. Let's click on one, let's let that load. Open up another tab. Let's go, I don't know, weather in Dallas. And if we go back to the RAM, we can see that as we open up more stuff, it starts using up more and more memory. All right, let's load up a whole bunch of other things. I've got the calculator open. Let's open up a WordPad. Let's open up something like Calendar, just so we get a bunch of things going in. And we can see that the more stuff that we load in, the memory, it gets used more and more and more. Notice that amount of free space in RAM. And especially when we go and close some of these apps down, now watch what will happen to the RAM and look at its usage. It starts to drop. But the important thing throughout this little exercise, we never hit the maximum amount of RAM that we have on this computer. Now, here is another system. This system has got 16 gigs of RAM and we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to open up a bunch of Chrome windows, play some videos, go to the weather in Dallas and let's see what it does to that RAM. And yes, of course, the more stuff that we open, the more RAM gets used. And just like before, we're going to open up a bunch of um, apps like the calculator. Let's open up the WordPad. Let's open up the calendar. And again, stuff gets used in memory. But in both cases, we were nowhere near the maximum RAM capability of that computer. So on the 8 gigs system, if we just slap 16 gigs of RAM, would it make that computer that much faster? Probably not. We need to look at the rest of the hardware. If your processor is slow or your graphics card is slow, just slapping on more RAM is not going to magically make your entire machine faster. Okay, so let's assume you have a decent processor, an SSD, and you want to upgrade your RAM. Well, how much do you actually need? Well, realistically today, anything that's below 8 gigs falls into the must upgrade category. With about 8 gigs of RAM, you should be fine for the basic stuff like Microsoft Office and web browsing. And yes, even some gaming, but expect some latency issue and low frame rates, which means it's not going to be super smooth gaming, but it's definitely doable. At the 16 gigs level, you could also start using some higher intensive software like video editing or higher end gaming as long as it's paired with a decent processor and a great graphic card you should be okay but 32 gigs or higher is just golden and again and to be clear before somebody asks me in the comments about their personal circumstances this isn't a rule it's just a guideline so what about all these ram boosting tools do they actually work just don't. Do not go out and buy a specific tool just to clear your memory. Your RAM should be used, it shouldn't be empty. If it's empty, it means that your computer will just need to put everything back into RAM, which does the exact opposite effect and slows down your computer. There may be times when your computer is acting weird, you know, like it's slow and sluggish, it shows the blue screen of death, or it's freezing. Then it's a good idea to run the built-in and free Windows Memory Diagnostic Utility. Just go down to the Windows search bar and then type there Windows Memory Diagnostics and click on the tool. Select the option that you want 
And then when your computer reboots, it will just run a complete scan of your computer's RAM to see if there are any actual issues. One thing that is definitely a scam is downloading more RAM. That is not a thing. RAM is a physical thing, it's not software. Downloading RAM was just a joke in 2004 when somebody asked on a forum, I think it was, where they could download more RAM since their computer was slow. And for some reason, that just stuck around. However, it is worth mentioning that Windows does allow for something called Ready Boost. If your computer is really that ancient with very little RAM, you can actually plug in a flash drive, right click on it, select Ready Boost and enable it. Windows will use that flash drive as a kind of makeshift place to store more info like it does in your RAM. There is also a Windows feature called Virtual Memory that allows your computer to use a portion of your hard drive as memory. Now right click on the Windows icon, select System, then Advanced System Settings, click on the settings again in the performance section, and then click on advanced at the top. And then under virtual memory, click on change. Now it is set automatically and personally, I wouldn't mess with this as you could actually slow down your computer and not make it faster. So now are you ready to go out and buy new RAM? Actually, not yet. Let me arm you with some information so that when you go and speak to your local tech shop, you kind of know what you're looking for when they start recommending things that will work for your system. So the first thing you need to know is you need to know the make and model of your motherboard. This will tell the techie what stuff it can and cannot handle. To find that out, you can simply open up your computer and see what motherboards you have, or if you're lazy or you just don't want to, you can just use a simple utility like CPU-Z, which can show you the make and the model or the motherboard that you have, and then you can just simply Google that information and look for information about your RAM. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at how many free slots of RAM you have. In my machine, I currently have two free slots. So that means that I can go buy two additional 32 gigs DIMMs, bringing the total up to 128 gigs of RAM, which my computer can handle. Ah, next up, just like your CPU, your processor, the RAM has a clock speed. This is measured in megahertz. So if your local computer tech shop person says that you can get a cheaper 8 gig DIMM, you need to ask, what speed is it? He should tell you something like 2400 megahertz or 3600 megahertz or whatever. Ideally, you want your RAM to be the fastest megahertz that your motherboard can support. And if possible, to be from the same manufacturer. Now this is not a hard rule. You can mix up manufacturers and yes, you can mix up speeds, but for optimal performance, it is highly recommended that both the manufacturer and the speed types are going to be the same. This is why sometimes your tech person will tell you that you need to replace your current RAM with a brand new set of RAMs. They aren't trying to rip you off, but they want everything to match and at the highest speed. So the whole exercise will be worth it for you. So yes, you can of course go online and then pick your own memory. But I advise that a quick call to the local tech shop is probably your best bet, uh, just to be on the safe side and that there are no compatibility issues. And realistically, that's what I do whenever I wanna upgrade. Now that you know all about RAM and where you should or shouldn't spend your money, check out this video right over here about some other Windows boosting tips or check out this video right over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head down here to subscribe and help me get to that 1 million subs because you're awesome. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in this video or in this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.